Thank you for joining us for this week's edition of Crop Tech Consults. As guys start to crunch the numbers this year with low corn prices, one of the questions that comes up a lot is whether to keep their in furrow starter application. And then if they do decide to keep their in furrow starter application, then it's a question of what starter do I use? What blend? What analysis? Do I use an orthophosphorus? Do I use a polyphosphorus or a blend of the, of the two? And the orthophosphorus is sold as a higher grade starter that is going to be more readily plant available. And that's true because the plant has to have, the, it's going to take up that phosphorus in an orthophosphorus blend. So to understand a little better, when we look at the soil solution, particulate phosphorus in the soil cannot be uptaken by the plant. It's very stable. It's not going to leach out. It's not going to go anywhere, but it's not plant available. And as it transforms into an orthophosphate, all right, it's going to be water soluble. Now it can be uptaken by the plant, and now it could also leach from the soil profile. Um, so to be uptaken by the plant, it's going to have to be in the ortho form. So a polyphosphorus starter is going to have to convert to an orthophosphate before it can actually be uptaken by the plant. So the orthophosphates are going to have a more highly available phosphorus at the time of application. The caveat is the plant does not need orthophosphate at the time of application or the time of planting. All right, It's going to be living off seed starch through germination until it gets out of the ground. It's not going to uptake that phosphorus until it's into the V1, probably into the V2 stage. All right, So that gives us amount of time to try to convert that poly to an ortho. And what do we need to convert poly to an ortho? We need temperature. So when we think of phosphorus in the soil, in our soil test, before that phosphorus we measure in our soil test starts to become available, we have to warm that six inches of soil that the test came from up to the 60 degree level to get the microbes going and start to get the roll of that phosphorus. And that takes a while, which is why we ban phosphorus in row to try to get a response and growth early in the season. We want more available up front for that plant. But orthophosphate, the level of orthophosphate available is, is a lot different in furrow because now we're not talking about six inches of, of soil solution. We're talking at two inches of depth. So if we put polyphosphate at two inches of depth, it doesn't, it, on a 70 degree day, we can warm the top two inches of that soil up quite a bit and we can start that conversion from the poly to the ortho and then at night it shuts down the next day we get a little bit more we get a little bit more because remember we have days to convert this poly to an ortho before the plants actually going to need it um, there's some studies from the 70s that came out that say even in 41 degree soils after 48 hours 50 percent of a polyphosphate is already into the ortho form uh, which is quite a bit so now that's giving us just after a 48 hour window that gives us quite a bit of ortho to be able to uh, uptake by the plants and that would be assuming that you're starting with a 100 percent poly blend of of starter which usually isn't the case a lot of times it's a blend so if you're placing it in furrow you'd have possibly some ortho already in the starter that's plant available and that conversion is going to happen very quickly um, so we look at it, if you have enough temperature to germinate the seed to get it out of the ground to v1 v2 then you probably had enough temperature to convert quite a bit of your polyphosphorus that's placed in furrow into the ortho form to make it plant available. So if I'm choosing my starters, I'm not going to focus near as much on whether it's an ortho or whether it's a poly. I'm going to focus on a high grade low salt starter. All right, So we want to look at salt indexes of starter. We want a low salt starter because if we place a high amount of salt, change the osmotic pressure around the roots, we can actually pull water out of the roots back into the soil or out of this plant cells and we cause what's known as root burn or salt burn. We can cause damage to the plant. So high salt starters need to stay away or out of the furrow or need to stay at very low rates so we don't cause damage. So if I'm choosing between my starter blends, I'm going to choose a blend that gets me the most nutrients for dollar spent that I can still apply at a safe amount in furrow not to cause any damage. Now sometimes that will be the ortho. Sometimes if the ortho allows me to apply more nutrients in furrow, I'm going to be able to take that, spend the money there if I can safely put more nutrients down in there 
more phosphorus to be able to, to get that plant up and going that could be well worth it. On the other hand, there may be some very fine poly blends out there that can provide you with that phosphorus nitrogen blend that you're wanting in furrow, still at a safe application for a little bit cheaper cost. And in that sense, I'd go there. It's all about dollars spent and nutrients safely able to apply in furrow. Now, if we're going outside the furrow, so if we're using a huck step shoe or a two by two scenario, salt index is not a concern. And then I'm simply looking at what nutrients I need for the dollars spent. Ortho versus poly is really out the window at that point because now your root system of the plant is going to have to move over to hit that 2x2. Two two. So all of that polyphosphorus that was applied will be converted to ortho at that point. So I'm not worried about poly ortho in a 2x2 two two scenario at all. I'm not worried about the salt index at all. I'm simply worried about dollars spent for nutrients uh, applied in that scenario. So I think the poly versus ortho may be a little bit overblown. It is important because we have to be in the ortho form to get uptake by the plant. But at the same time, it, it's definitely not at the top of my list when I'm comparing two blends of fertilizer. I'm still looking at how many nutrients or how what's the volume of nutrients that I can safely apply with a low salt index in furrow for my dollar spent to make sure economically I come out on top. Remember to tune back in next week for the next edition of Crop Tech Consults.